The ITW Sonic comic series has had a lot of arts. Battle for the Empire, Tango and Whisper, Imposter Syndrome, Overpowered, but there was one arc that many find, at least in their opinion, the most memorable. The Metal Virus Saga. In this saga, Eggman, who had his memory restored, creates a metal virus that whoever comes in contact with it becomes a Zombot. And it's this issue where Sonic and his friends are put to the most dangerous and most stressful adventure of their lives. Filled with so much sadness, heartbreak, and of course, controversy. Before I start, I will say that the Metal Virus Saga is when I started to read the comments. I believe I started reading it after the issue where Charming gets affected. I saw images of it on Twitter, I believe, and that's when I was like, oh man, wow, this is really serious. I guess I gotta go start reading the comments now. So yeah. Thanks to that comic. So the whole arc is very memorable for a lot of things. And this was the start of where Starline began to see Eggman differently, resulting in him getting tossed away, going crazy, and creating insurgent kids. It was also memorable for how high the stakes were and how many characters were utilized and brought back. It also showed Sonic in a new light, because in most situations, he's never shown to be very tired, this angry, upset, and sad. He's pushed to his limits in this. He was gonna infect Eggman. I think he would up here. I really enjoy seeing this. I know I may sound like, oh wow, seeing Sonic being so upset makes me happy. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you see, I'm glad to see Sonic in a position that he can't really control. If he doesn't run, the virus will spread. But sadly, because he keeps running and running, he's getting tired. If he falls asleep, the virus will infect him. So he has to run. And a lot of the impact of the people getting infected kind of made Sonic question himself and how his morals of letting the enemy continue to get chances of a better life really got to him. Uh, before we get to the big elephant in the room, let's talk about a lot of the negatives before moving on to the positives that everyone had for this arc. For one thing, people, and myself included, it didn't really like how long the arc was and it seemed to drag on for a bit. Now, there was uh, two sides to this. One, I do agree that the arc went on for way too long. All the way to the all or nothing climax. Too much going on and it really went on for a long time. People were wondering, is this when it's going to end? When it's going to end? It took way too long for them to see the end of this. However, the other side of this coin here is that people say that the reason why it went on for so long is because it's to reflect on how a real zombie apocalypse would be. Because a zombie apocalypse, they wouldn't be resolved in just three or four issues. It would be for a while. People getting infected, finding a cure, losing the cure, ending it off once and for all, it would last for quite a bit. The next negative is the big one. And that is... Cream the Rabbit! <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, Shadow. Okay... Ooh, okay, this is the moment where everyone has noticed where Shadow's character is really just him being an angry, edgy dude who only really cares about himself with a bit of, with a big, big ego. And that's because Ian Flynn, the writer, said that Sega has a specific way of writing Shadow, and it's displayed in a way that's very bad. See, Shadow doesn't really listen to Sonic's words to get away so he won't get affected, because he thinks that since he's the ultimate life form, he won't get infected, and that cowards won, I win. Uh, now, of course, Ian did say that they needed to get Shadow out of the way. It made sense to make the situation more, even more dire. In, zombie, in any kind of horror story, you always take out the strongest player. Ian also has said that the way he went out wasn't the way he intended. He wanted Shadow to go out by taking off his ring inhibitors, you know, like in Sonic 06, and obviously not to use this dialogue, but Sega said no. This is where Shadow's character continued to get worse over time, and it's why Ian doesn't want to write for the character unless Sega lessens the restrictions. Well, Shadow is confirmed to be showing up in the Urban Warfare arc, so let's see and hope that he's written very well. Another thing people didn't seem to like was the deadly sits getting involved, because many were like, why are they here? I guess it was to raise the situation even higher, I guess? But even so, we already had like a big villain thing, adding more conflict and more characters were like, 
that's already too much. And I think doing that is the reason why the metal virus went on for even longer. Alright, now onto the positives. One, it feels like this is a do or die situation, and it literally is. I mean, Silver even came back from his time because it was a wreck in his future. I also enjoy seeing a lot of the other Sonic characters who we haven't even seen for a while. I didn't expect to see the Babylon Roads back. And I love that one annual comic with Metal Sonic trying to see if he can be infected just like Sonic. And with no dialogue at all, you can just see how he feels. You can feel how he feels. He sees now that no matter what, he'll never be Sonic. He'll just be a machine. And we gotta see how Big got infected too. Ugh, man, that scene. The Chaotics, ugh, man, they really came down on them hard. You could just feel for each of them. Especially when Espio was all alone, and that scene in my in All or Nothing when he has the Chaos Emerald in his hand. Man, he really loves them as, fa as family. And then poor Whisper losing Tangle, man, that art. Cream losing her mom and then really being upset about it. Mm, man, that, that one panel. And speaking of upset, wow, Sonic. Ooh. Usually, Sega is super tight about how Sonic is not to show too much emotion. They don't want him showing too much emotion around him, uh, anything. Just be his normal, normal self. But in here, they kind of lessen the restriction of that and let him emote. He's angry, doubting himself, sad, frustrated, furious. Literally, I feel like in this panel right here, he was gonna cry. He would have. A lot of us always see Sonic being 100% cheerful, never letting anything get to him. And if it did, it would be barely noticeable. So I thank Sega for lessening that restriction to let Ian write that. Thank you for that. The Metal Virus Saga even had some moments for some of the citizens in the town who are dealing with this. Like with Vector shielding off one citizen, being sorry about it. Another not wanting to be alone. It really was such a dark of a saga. It makes me wish this whole saga was like a video game. That would have been awesome. The arc extended into the All or Nothing saga when the Deadly Sis had the Emeralds and were controlling the Zombots. And this, we see once again the characters doing something. And in the last issue, you can see that this is it. No going back. If we lose, it's over. And with one final attack to send the virus away, the day is saved, everyone is freed. All except Sonic, who was sent into Blaze's world with amnesia. Fun fact again, Maureen was supposed to debut here, and I think many, including me, wish Sonic losing his memory lasted longer. It literally went one and done. All in all, Metal Virus was a very good saga, and honestly, I'm glad I got into the comments this way. Though, I didn't buy every issue. I only started doing that once Imposter Syndrome rolled around. Yeah, I'm a sucker for clone stories. It may have dragged on and on for a bit, and it had many moments where a character was damaged, but it was a solid arc in my opinion. What did you guys think of this arc, and what did you not like about it? And what could you change one thing, or improve on one thing also? I'll see you guys next time, as we get ready for Urban Warfare.